So if you have your loops.js file open, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out some pseudocode as to what goal we are trying to accomplish. In this case, I'm just going to write comments in the file by using those two slashes and then writing out some English sentences. The goal, in this case, build a pyramid out of hashtags. This is what this looks like. Build a pyramid out of hashtags. The pyramid should go up and then have a space in between it and then go back down. Okay, so this pyramid is mirrored over a single space. Oops, wrong one. How is that Mario? We're just building the Mario pyramid that you end every game. If you ever played Mario, the old Mario on the Game Boy, there's a flag at the top. We're just gonna build that side of the pyramid and then mirror it down the other side as well. Does that make sense? The pyramid is mirrored and there is a space in between. So to do this, first, we need to figure out how tall the pyramid is going to be. In JavaScript, the easiest way to do this is just to store that value in a variable. Now you can declare variables two or three different ways in JavaScript. You can use the var keyword and then name your variable, which I'm going to say height, and set it equal to something like five. Or you can say let height equals five, which is what we saw in the video. He said let n equals zero. He initialized n to zero. Let is the the preferred way to do that in modern JavaScript. You can also, if you know that a variable is not going to change, you can call it a constant. Const height equal five. Any of these will work. Let, far, const, they're all the exact same thing. They're creating a variable that stores how tall we want our pyramid to be. Const height equals five. So this pyramid is going to be five rows tall. Now, why did I choose five? Take a look at the pyramid we have in the example. There are one, two, three, four, five rows. Now, what else do you notice about the five rows here? Which row has the most number of hashtags? The bottom. How many does it have? Five. So the height, the height of the pyramid is the same as the number of hashtags in the bottom row. And this is actually a very important thing to notice. That the number of hashtags in the bottom row is equal to the height of the pyramid. If you notice that one fact, it makes this whole challenge a lot easier and I'll show you why. What we're going to do is we're going to build this pyramid row by row. So this algorithm here, algorithm, is going to build the pyramid row by row. So for each row, we are going to run a function that prints a pyramid row. So for each row, run a function that prints the pyramid row. Again, all I'm doing is I'm writing out pseudocode here. Just comments, English text that explains what my code is going to do. The reason why I do this is because if I get lost, if I start writing something that doesn't make sense, I can always look back at my pseudocode and figure out, am I accomplishing the goal I originally set out to accomplish? Or do I need to change what it is I'm actually trying to do because my algorithm is wrong. So writing pseudocode is super important in getting your code to do exactly what you need it to do. So before I do anything else, I'm going to create a function called build pyramid row. Now this is what a function looks like in JavaScript. You use the keyword function followed by the name of the function followed by open and closing parentheses. 
and then followed by squigglies. What goes inside here is the body of the function. The body is the code that actually gets run. So what we've done here is we've defined a function. This is called defining a function. This doesn't make the function actually do anything. We just defined it. This is what the function is. It's called a build pyramid row. So actually make, run the function, we need to call the function, which I will show you in a second, but that's exactly right, Ishmael. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to build, I'm gonna make this function just print out five hashtags. That's the first thing I'm gonna do first. Are you ready? It's gonna, be, it's gonna only build the bottom row first, then we're gonna improve the algorithm. You ready? We're gonna say console.log, and I'm just gonna put five hashtags. Like that. And then I'm gonna console.log a space, and I'm gonna put five hashtags again. This is all my function does right now. Or if I want to get even better, just put the space and the five hashtags in here. Because this is technically the bottom row of the pyramid. This is what it should look like, right? It should have five hashtags and then a space and then five hashtags. I have five hashtags here, then I have a space and then five more hashtags. You see that? Now if I run this function, and you run a function by calling the function's name, build pyramid row, followed by open and closing parentheses. This is called calling the function. So right here, we define the function. And right here, bless you, we call the function. Calling the function actually makes the code run. So it executes whatever code is inside the function body. If you don't remember any of this stuff, do some of your function labs again. It will go over this actual language and vocabulary. But if you want me to go over it explicitly, I can also do that for you later on. Now, to run this code, you type in the word node followed by the name of the file. What's the name of my file here? It's called loops.js, the file. At least that's what I named my file, loops.js. So if you type in node space loops.js, it should run your code and you should get the bottom row of your pyramid in the terminal. Does everybody get that? Five hashtags followed by a space followed by five hashtags. Now, what's the problem with my function up to this point? Yeah, it prints out the bottom row, Jimmy, but is it going to be able to do anything more than that? No. This function never changes. It's always going to print out five hashtags and then a space and then five hashtags. That's fine. That's just a very poor algorithm because the algorithm is going to do the same thing every single time. An algorithm does the same thing every time is usually not that useful. And so what we need to do is we need to introduce a way for it to change how many times it prints out a hashtag. To do that, we need to alter the function. We need to give the function parameters. Right here, I'm gonna say number or num hashtags. The number of hashtags. And this is, we're introducing a parameter to this function. What this parameter is going to do is it's going to change the way the function works. We're going to use this number to determine exactly how many hashtags to print out each time. I put num hashtags. That's the name of my parameter. Num hashtags, standing for the number of hashtags. Some people might just put like num, or some people might just put like n. That's fine too. What this does is it creates a temporary variable for us to use inside the function. This temporary variable can be used to do whatever we want. But for the time being, I'm just gonna keep it as num hashtags because that's the most explicit. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna build this function to take in the number of hashtags and print out that number. I'm gonna do that in the next video.